Oh yeah, now if you want to ensure people putting the right things into your spreadsheet and not messing stuff up, then you probably ought to be using data validation. Now, in this video, I found a great video on the Excel Champs channel, six super amazing tips for data validation. I learned a lot from it and I just want to go through some of the things I learned so you can learn them too. Hi, I'm John, this is Up For Excel, and this is one of my review videos where I go trawling around YouTube looking for stuff that I've learned that's new on Excel, and I bring it to you and sort of summarize for you uh, what's going on. But obviously I want you to go and check out Excel Champs video. You'll get a lot more from it. I'm just gonna give you a, a bit of an overview, some of the key things that I got from the video and pass them on to you. So the video is called Six Classy Data Validation Tips Stroke Excel Tutorials. It's on the Excel Champs channel. So the key thing about this video is it's got some ways of using data validation that I hadn't, hadn't previously crossed my mind. There's nothing particularly complex. It's just um, some great ways of doing stuff that I think, I thought, wow, well, yeah, you know, I've not actually thought about doing that myself. The first thing is that he uses um, the cell, tests the formulas before he puts them into data validation in normal cells. Because any formula pretty much that you can come up with in an Excel cell that comes up with either true or false, you could use as a data validation. So he uses that on every occasion. He uses that as a, as a method. So if you see on here, you know, basically goes through saying, right, Let's type a formula in here, so for example. So he's using there, I don't know if you could just say the is text formula, and it's gonna give you true or false. Well, of course, then you can put that in your data validation rule, and it's gonna give you either true or false, and it's gonna like, um, you can use it. So let's just see what, you, see what I mean. So if I want that, he's saying equals is text, uh, that cell, right? So that's false. If I type in John, obviously it's going to be true. Uh, but if I type in 12, it's going to be false. So how do you do that? Well, here's your formula. You're just going to go in there. So F2 and Control A, Control C. Go to here, your data validation, um, any rule. Actually, we want custom formula. Paste it in the formula. Click OK. So now, if I type in John, nothing happens here. I don't even need that formula anymore. Type in 12. Now I get a data validation error. So nothing amazing about that particular formula. It's just a great little technique that I saw him use and thought, yeah, that's great. So. The second thing that I thought was good as well was this uh, little tip, which is larger values than the previous cell. So this time, if we put 12 in there, we want this to be higher rather than lower. So again, we could just put equal. So if that is greater than that, and we just put a true or a false in there, True or false, uh, one is false. So it's just got to be higher or lower than the cell above. Again, same thing. You just go take that formula in there. And of course, the first cell you can't put it on, but data validation, again, formula, off you go. Now, if I put two in, it's fine. If I put one in, can't do it. Three in, it's fine. Change that to three. That one I now try to put in three again, won't have it. So, <laughs> brilliant. So carrying on, next one then, non-duplicates. So what formula is he using here? Well, he's gonna put a count involving the entire range this time. So this is another sort of thing that I'd never really thought of doing, using an entire range of cells 
to establish the criteria for the data validation. So it does a count if here, and obviously it wants that count if to be um, greater than or equal to one, or less than one. So here in this formula you see in the data validation, it's gonna put equals, let's just see what it puts. It equals one. So again, it's saying that the count of the item has got to equal one, and that stops you putting in any kind of duplicates. So the way this works then, essentially we just need a count in there to count. So we're just gonna say equals the count if, got all of that criteria, F4 to fix it, equals that. We don't wanna fix that. Um, equals one. So that's gonna be false all the way down at the moment. But you can see if I put in, so as soon as we get to two, we end up with it being false. So as long as we have unique items in there, see the twos now appear as false. So we know that's gonna work. So we just, again, we can take that formula and we can slap it in as the data validation formula for all of that. So now we can say, well, so let's say we want um, John, Paul, why not George and Ringo, hey? And then I'll add me to that list. Oh no, you can't do that, you've already got John, yeah? So that's how that one works. Data validation beginning with a unique character first. So in this, what's his formula? He's basically gonna say, um, he's using the exact function to say that he wants certain characters to be exactly the same as others. So in here, he wants it to start with EC, for example. So this could be useful if you've got a field where you're putting in customer numbers or something and say you, everything starts with a C. If you don't want somebody typing in anything that doesn't start with a C, you could say, well, the first left character needs to be a C. Exactly the same principle, really. I'm not gonna labor the point by going back into the Excel spreadsheet to show you, but that's for starting characters. And of course, with this, you could use mid or right or any kind of text functions you could even use kind of wild cards in there or whatever to ensure that for example the the data contains something so you could use like the find or the search function in there to do that as well as long as you can create a formula that will come up with either true or false at the end you can use it in that data validation so that's another great idea Now this one I thought was a unique use as well, which was days of the week. And in this, he uses the weekday function to determine um, whether or not it's a particular day of the week. Now, the great thing about that is that you could, and what he does is essentially say, well, let's make sure it's a Monday to Friday. So if you said um, you used like this, uh, for example, Monday through Sunday is numbers one to seven, you could say, well, if the weekday is greater than or less than six, sorry, less than six, must be a weekday. So you get true or false for that. That stops people putting in week, weekend dates, for example, which would be great if you're like dealing with projects or something, start dates, end dates, you know, you're unlikely to want them finishing and starting on say Sunday perhaps. So another great use. And then finally, um, this one, also something I'd not really thought of doing myself, and that is making sure that you get a particular total of a series of cells. Now, the, his example actually that he goes through is units sold. Immediately I saw this, I thought, I know what I'd use this for. 
when you need a column of numbers to add up to 100%. That is so, so often that is the case. And you just have a total down the bottom and you maybe have some conditional formatting or some kind of like, you know, one minus the total and you monitor it. But for this, I just thought, brilliant for conditional formatting. You could just basically block or warn even people that if the total of their column is going to be more than or less than 100%. So one way you could do this, for example, let's just take uh, another column over here. Um, we'll just do paste the values and the formats and get rid of that. So imagine I want this lot to be a 100%. So control shift five turns them into a percent and you know, I'll go down sort of saying what I want, right? But if I have to make that equal to a hundred percent, I can't have it going over a hundred percent. I just put equals the sum of all of that less than one, right? True. And if I fix that, so true to the method here that one put that as the data validation formula there we go so now i can't go over i can put in some random it's not going to allow that so 12 uh, 9 and obviously anything above one in there Uh, why that's coming up like that I know why because I said less than one <laughs> so obviously it should have been less than or equal to one so deliberate error there that gives me the hundred percent so we can't go over but we can go under so that would be a great use case for that sort of a formula definitely go and check out the Excel Champs video, six amazing super tips, or super amazing tips even for data validation. Links in the description, plenty of other videos on there on this channel as well if you want to take a look at those. Um, hope you found that useful, I'll see you soon.